Hey, welcome to this fire start event Let's go. from wherever you're located around the world. My name is Bradley and my name is Luke and if it's your first time connecting in today we want to give you a special welcome. We're so yeah. glad that you're here, that you took that bold step to come and join one of our fire starter locations come around on. the world. We have an amazing event lined up for you today. Today yeah. we are in the last part of our series Audacious. Come on. We've been tracking this over the last few weeks and it's been so powerful as we're looking at what it looks like to live this audacious life, this life filled with faith. And today is the last part. So if you've been joining us over the last few weeks, I want to encourage you to lean in as Pastor G, um, Pastor Gary Snowzel, who founded this church, is going to wrap up this series today. It's going to be powerful. Yes, it's going to be powerful. And so right now we are going to go into a time of worship. And Come what on. this basically means is we're going to sing together and worship the Lord. So I want to encourage you. So wherever you're located, no matter how many people are in the room, I'd like to encourage you guys to engage, to stand up and to sing along and worship the Lord. Come on, let's go.
cast my nets. So I cast my nets on the other side. If you say it, I will do it. You provide. And so I cast my nets on the other side. I see the water stirring. You provide. Come on, let's lift this up. One, two, three. So I cast my nets on the other side. If you say it, I will do it. You provide. So I cast my nets on the other side. Just a door into a brighter sun. When I reach the other side, for eternity you will provide. Let's do the shout for that. Woo!
I want to welcome you then to the last part of Audacious. Uh, we've had five, this is the part five, part five Audacious. It's funny because the title I've got is Finishing Well. So I thought, well, it's the finisher, part five of Audacious. This, this idea uh, around Audacious that God says, you know, don't just be typical um, in your expectations, but be, be risky, be dangerous. Um, don't just do what people expect, but step outside of the norm. And I love that. As believers of Jesus Christ and the followers of him, all the time he says, right, we're going on an adventure. It's about adventure. It's like this, this whole thing of stepping into um, a risk situation. And sometimes it might not always work out. There's no guarantees. And this is what faith is like. You know, if anyone told you, come to Jesus and there's a guarantee that it's all going to work out how you expect. It's like you were sold the wrong faith, my friend. There is something, it's exciting, it's dangerous, but it is not safe. That's what we say about him. He is the lion. He is the lion of Judah. He is not safe, but he is king and he is good. And so here we are, we uh, approach this last one, finishing well. And uh, I, I want to start by just talking about things like medication. Because, and I was going to bring some like boxes of unfinished medication. Because you know how around, around some of your houses, you've got those little places that you, you perhaps have a few things where you went to the doctor and he said, you've got to take this for like, I don't know, seven days, make sure you finish it. And some of you never finished it, did you? But you kept it just in case. I don't know why you're keeping it, but it's like, you know, it's like, well, it might come in handy. And you don't even know what they are, so be very careful. Because you forgot they were three years ago. And, um, and, and so some of us got this little pile of stuff. And, uh, and, and that's what I want to frame this with. Going uh, some years ago, when I played rugby, I had a sport injury. In the bottom of my back that was damaged. And uh, where it was damaged, I just suffered for many years after Every sort of, normally, once a month, I'd have a few days where all, my, all the nerves would get trapped. It would go up into my neck, and it was just a thing I lived with. Until I found this great Christian guy, actually was from Cardiff, this physio guy. And uh, he said, hey, I can help you with that. And so he took me through, and he showed me to do some exercises. And I was thinking at the time, I was thinking, surely, I've, I've lived with this for so many years. And I'm thinking, do you think doing these stretches, it was like stretches, it wasn't medication, it was stretches and stuff. I thought, do you really think? They didn't even seem related to where the pain was. And so, you know, obviously, I trusted him. This guy's got qualifications. And so I, I followed him, and uh, I did those things. And the amazing thing was, he said, if you do these three times uh, a day, 10 reps, whatever, whatever, he said, do this, uh, you know, 10, 15 minutes, it will start to change where all that damage is. So I did it, and you know what? It, it worked. It worked. Like it is. It's, it's a miracle. So um, <laughs> what I did is when I got better, obviously after a few weeks, I stopped doing it. <laughs> because what do you think? You think I'm better now? Have you done, have you done this? It's like, I'm feeling, whew, I'm feeling good, you know? I couldn't do that before. Couldn't lift up this arm that high. And it was like, I'm feeling good. And it was and, until... <laughs> There was some stress things going on, and what happened, it fires up, the, and I'm back there again. And obviously, what I thought is, I gave up doing what I should have continued. And I want to start off this, this, this sort of finishing well with this concept that we in life, we face certain challenges, pain, difficulty, maybe that we got an obstacle, some hardship, and God will come and say, you need to keep doing this. <laughs> You need to keep going. Maybe it's prayer. Maybe it's because when we hit struggles, isn't it amazing how we pray more? When things are going well, we tend to drift back more. When we need a breakthrough, we were like, we're there. I'm, going, I'm actually going to get real serious now. I'm going to fast. Do you know what I mean? It's like, because I need to see a breakthrough. So we, we sort of equate it to, I'm in trouble, I'll do whatever it takes. But when I'm not in trouble, and what I believe God's word is, this is just a, a, a great word for someone without where we're going. There are some things that God called you to do, and he called you to continue, not just start something. And yet, because you've neglected it, the challenge has come back. And you've ended up in a cycle because you won't finish what God has called you to finish. Finish well. 
finish well. Hebrews 10 verse 36 says, you need to persevere. We love that word, persevere with that medication, persevere with those. Even when you feel well, persevere. Persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. So to receive what God has promised, you need to persevere and finish what you need to finish. Don't give up too soon. I don't, when, when he says you need to, I don't think this is a suggestion. This is like a command. He says you need to persevere. Because unless you persevere, you won't see the full promise of what God has. I think it's possible to have a great start with God. It's possible for you in your faith to start really well. And some people in their early years of following Jesus, there is uh, this passion, enthusiasm, but then they get knocked and they get hit and they get disappointed. And then they're not doing so well. They lose some of that passion. And I think from it, they end up sort of struggling. And then you see people who end up not finishing. God wants you to finish. I want to say every one of us, doesn't matter what stage you are, God wants you to finish. The enemy wants you to give up. The enemy wants you, you to think, do you know what, I think I've done enough, or I don't know what else I can do. Continue. <laughs> Continue with what he said to you. Because you won't see the full reward for your life unless you finish the course. Persevere. So I'm going to use a story in fact, it's about Joshua. So come on. Joshua, here he is uh, in the Bible. And we will know that Joshua is related to Joshua and the walls of Jericho. So this is the story we're going to quickly look at. And uh, Joshua was Moses' apprentice. He was, he was one of the spies that went into the promised land. He was, like one of the, he was like this young warrior soldier going back then. But for 40 years, he'd been in the place he shouldn't be because of other people's decisions. But here we are, he ends up, Moses has died, Joshua is alive, and now he is leading, and he has just led Israel. He's led like you know a few million people through the River Jordan, so they've crossed finally after 40 years, they've crossed from the uninhabited, uncivilized desert place of the lack, and they've been waiting to get in the promise, and he takes them through, and they cross through the Jordan, they cross through this river, and now they cross into the promised land after 40 years. Can you imagine if I said to you, you got a promise coming, you just be patient, 40 years, you're going to get it. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's going to be, you're going to build up a lot of expectation. Well, I would. I'd be like, 40 years. I'm thinking, this has got to be good, 40 years. And you're thinking about where I've been, and you know, I'm, I'm looking older now. I'm, you know, maybe I'm a bit tired, but we fought battles, but we come here. Now we're stepping into the promise. And this is, this is where we pick up the story. Uh, Joshua 6, verse 1 to 5. Now the gates of Jericho, because as soon as they step into the promise, what do you have? You've got a city called Jericho. Oh, there's a big walled city. It says it was securely barred because of the Israelites. Because they heard about the Israelites were coming. So they shut the city up. No one went out and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have delivered Jericho into your hands. Along with its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark and on the seventh day march around the city seven times and with the priest blowing the trumpets and when you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets have the whole army give a loud shout a loud shout then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up everyone straight in so you got the picture so the lord is speaking they've turned up and they've thought this is the promise I think it's so much like us. 40 years, I'm ready. I'm turning up, and the promise looks like it's all shut up. It is a walled, like this is imposing. You're looking, and you're thinking, this is the promise? And you've turned up, and you've seen this promise, and yet God is saying, I don't want you to attack it in a, in a traditional way. I want you to get some trumpets. I want you to march around. <laughs> It's not going to be over quick. 
You're going to follow me. Follow the course. See? Follow the course. He's talking. He said, do this for six days. Follow the course. This, is, this is, represents so much of what God says to us and how he leads us. So in verse 12 and 14, if we skip forward, Joshua, so he gets up. This is, this is when he actually puts it into action. Joshua got up early the next morning and the priest took up the, the ark of the Lord, just as God said. The seven priests carrying the seven trumpets, they went forward, marching before the ark of the Lord and blowing the trumpets. And the armed men went ahead of them. And the rear guard followed the ark of the Lord while the trumpets kept sounding. What a, what a peculiar sight. Isn't worship, isn't praise peculiar to those that don't understand it? Isn't it funny how we don't always want to praise in the face of the enemy? That's exactly what's happening here. So they came up. So on the second day, they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. They did this for six days. So imagine getting up. Uh, apparently, it took about an hour to march around. So you assemble your army, your fighting men. You go, boys, we got a plan. Joshua's there. He said, we got a plan. What's the plan? We've got the trumpeters. We've got the ark. We've got the, you know, we're all ready. And we're going to march around all together. We're going to get in a nice line and we're going to march around. And then after an hour, we're going to get back and we say, right, back home for lunch, boys. See you here tomorrow. Right? And this is like, and they did this for six days. Don't stop, don't stop short of the promise that God has for you. Six days, it says. I just want you to realize, six days, like, well done, guys. Well done. You did it for six days, right? But it says, it says, you got to do this on the seventh day. But here, it says they did it for six. They did it for six. But on the seventh day, something special happens. And, and I just feel that God wants to say to you, don't stop short on the six days, don't stop short on what he asks you to do. You might be right at the edge, right at the edge, <laughs> and so easily you think we've done this. I, I bet you there were soldiers there. There were men that were thinking, we have done this every day. They laugh at us from the walls. They haven't even thrown a spear. They haven't even like tried to attack us. They're blowing trumpets, and they are moving together, and then they all disappear and go home. Wow. I think it's an incredible lesson of how to trust God's leaders when maybe God has shown them something he hasn't shown you, but they're saying, do you know what? It's time to march. Will you be there having a moan <laughs> or saying, do they even know what they're doing because this doesn't make sense? Or are you going to say, you can count on me? I don't know what, but we're going to finish this. We're going to finish it, but we are not going to stay at six. Don't stop short. Because the trouble is, is when you've done six often, it's very easy to lose your passion. This wasn't like I thought it would turn out. And when you begin to lose passion, you enter apathy. And when you get apathetic, you don't turn out. And the enemy is there saying, I think we're getting them. As long as we can make them think God won't come through, we'll be okay. So there's three things I've learned about this in my life, about God calling me to walk around a wall that I'd prefer him to just break the walls in the first place. Lord, just do that and we'll march in and go and fight them. You know, this is the promised land. Come on. Some of us said, this is the promised land. How come? We've got to do this. You know, we've got to this point. But, but he's saying, come on, just, just follow it through. Follow it through. So there's three observations because you will find in your life this represents something in your life. You're marching around something right now that you are saying, right, Lord, we want to see the breakthrough. We want to see it come down. Why am I, why am I still marching? Why am I still coming down? First, first one is my perspective is limited. And this ties into last week's message that Joff did on Joseph, which is absolutely fantastic. It, it ties in. There was a big thing about perspective, our perspective. My perspective is limited. You'll see when we, when we look at verse 1 and verse 2, um, I'll just take you back. There's, whenever I look at Scripture, you've got to look at where God brings tension in the text. 
where there's, you, you see one thing, God says one thing, and then there's another thing, and you think, wow, that's at war with each other. And if you look at that, that's the point the scripture is trying to speak to you about. So here it is. The, the first one, it says, the gates of Jericho, not just a wall, were barred shut. They were barred gates. And it describes them as barred gates. And yet in verse 2, God turns around and says, I have given to you Jericho. So the tension is in, in these two verses. They're, they're looking. So with your natural eye, you're seeing they're barred up. These walls are so big, it says chariots were able to run around on the top of the wall. So the, these are like incredible walls. And the, the gates are barred up. This is like, this, this is overwhelming. There's no way to get in. And yet the second verse, it says, I've given it you. <laughs> And this is just what it's like for us. There might be a miracle you want to see. There might be a breakthrough you want to see in your life. And you're looking and you can see the bars. You can see the enemy saying, look at the bars I've got. Look, you're shut out. You're shut out of the promise. There's no way you can get in. Keep out, it says, on the door. And yet God says, I've already given it you. God's talking in the past tense. Is He's already done it. You just need to walk in it. But you've got to finish it. You've got to finish it. There's something about finishing it in this way. So how do you respond when what you see is nothing like what God said? This will be a great indicator of your maturity as a believer. If every time you see disappointment, you see a gate, you back off, you think, oh, I'm overwhelmed, God's deserted me, where is he? It's like that would just say that you're not at that place. And I want to encourage you, keep going, keep going. You've got to listen to what God says, not what you see. How do you respond? I spent years being discouraged by what I saw instead of what God said. And there is this tension in these verses that is saying, what will you believe, church? What will you believe for your life, for your family? The enemy will lock up. He'll bar your promise. And you know what? The bigger the call upon your life, the bigger the gates appear. You think, why, why do I keep having to fight for these things? Oh, it might be about something behind the gates. If you're contending in relationships, if you're contending for something of a breakthrough with faith or loved ones, God's put something in you to fight that through, follow the course, because of the greatness within you, the greater the gates appear. So again, you might you can either feel overwhelmed or you think, oh, that, that means there's a lot on the other side of these gates. <laughs> I'm glad someone fought for me. <laughs> Who do you need to fight for, church, to overcome? So the second thing is I learned is my progress isn't always obvious. My progress isn't always obvious. Heck, if it was left to me, I'd be doing my test on myself, and I'd be thinking, flipping it, I think you've gone backwards. <laughs> Come on, is that true? It's like, you know, oh, you didn't handle that one well. And look where, where you were a year ago. <laughs> and like, ooh. But progress with God isn't always possible. I mean, for Joshua, he was told that in seven days, on the seventh day, seven times, and then the walls would come down. So Joshua is holding on to God's word. But the army, they didn't know this. Joshua did. They're just following him. Sometimes we're not told the whole thing. All they're told is, we're turning back up here, 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. Right? We're going we're gonna to have sort of... Bacon rolls that, no, it wouldn't be bacon, but it would be like something like that afterwards. We'd have something like really great after, and um, we, we, we're then going to go home, come back the next day. My progress isn't always obvious. Every day there was progress. 40 years Joshua had been in the desert, and now when he finally steps into the promised land, God says, Seven more days. What? 40 years plus seven. Why can't we just like go in? No, seven. You got to take this new. He, see, he had a whole new army. 
They were different from the old. These are new guys. They've been through some things, and now, and now he's setting them up. He goes, I just need to check. I need to test their heart in this. So seven more days. Joshua knew the end game. The soldiers didn't. So you can imagine when, I don't know, um, Bert, Bert, you know, he's out there that day, walk around the wall. He goes home. His wife is there saying, Bert, you're back home safe. You look like the way you did when you left. How come you're back so early? Have the walls come down? Did you overcome? Well, we're just looking at the walls right now. We're just surveillance. You know, it's very important that you just check out everything. And so tomorrow, tomorrow, it's, it's going to, you imagine him saying, and then the next day, and he comes back again, uh, and, and he's like, yeah, well, today, today, we're just, whew, just preparing ourselves mentally. And this went on for six, I mean, just imagine the conversations at home with the, can we trust him? Can we trust our leader? Can we trust our God? This is what's going on. We all want to feel encouraged by making progress, but faith doesn't work that way. You know, Heather and I, we, we sort of do these times of like healthy eating and we have a certain diet and stuff. And H is like fantastic. She's great. She, you know, so we, we started off and it might be a 30 day thing, four days in, H, I don't feel any different. I feel even bigger than when I started. <laughs> And then this goes like the week after. There is a difference, but she can't tell the progress. And she's like, no, no, I'm sure I put these jeans on before. They were, they, do you know what? They were looser last week than they are this week. And I, I'm there going, H, just finish the course. Just get to the end. Don't, don't stop. Don't, some of you, you need, don't stop where you are and start checking your progress. Keep going forward. Keep going. God's doing something. He's doing something in you. I just believe that this word is for so many people today. Where you're on the journey, you're looking and you're discouraged because you're just thinking, I don't know if I've made much progress. And yet God is saying, keep going, keep going. Get up tomorrow and go again. Get up tomorrow. That's all he's asking you is day by day, get up and go again. Will you keep going even when it looks like your faith steps are not working? God wants you to. It's the nature of faith. You pour into it. There wasn't any cracks on day two or day three. Well, that would be pretty encouraging. It's like we walked around today and do you know what? Okay, it's not down. But I saw some cracks. Like, if I was in that, that bunch, I'd be there looking, going. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Guys, let's all stamp. It might help. Do you know what I mean? And you're looking for some cracks or something. Because you want, you want to see some progress. You want to see what your faith is doing. But often God doesn't work like that. You look and it's like, keep going. You might not see anything. In fact, what, what if God asks you to forgive someone? And when you do it, in faith, your relationship gets worse. Keep going. What happens if you ask God to heal? And you believe, but your health becomes worse, and the report comes in as worse. Are you going to keep going? This is where it hits the road. What about God says, I want you to give. I want you to tithe. I want you to step out in faith and do this. And it looks like things are getting worse. Would you take the steps? Keep taking the steps. See, for many of us, our focus is in the place of need, like Jericho. God, will you fight for us? When God's focus is so much more about, I want to do something in you. We are so set on what we want God to do for us, but he is more focused on what he wants to do in us. 
So go around those walls. God is doing something great in that army. He's doing something in Joshua. They, he's preparing them for what is to come in the promise. This is a training week. This is a week that they will never forget. But can you keep going? Can you keep going? There were no cracks on, on the seventh day. Right up to that day, before they did seven, on the seventh day, there wasn't any sign that their six days had made any difference. But it was what God was doing in them. What is God doing in you? Instead of being frustrated by his plan, say, well, God, why aren't you moving? Maybe it's like, God, what are you teaching me? What are you training me in? What are you showing me? The last one. Don't assume the process I am in has ended. That's something I learned. Because I made this huge mistake of telling God when I thought the process was ended. I thought, God, I've been this for a few years. You've tested this. You've tested that. God, I think we're done. I think like... We're ready, we're ready, you know. And I know I've gone through a few like wobbles, but you know, I'm like, you know, I think like, whoa, you humbled me. And you go through the list and you think, oh, well, that lesson and the way you came in there. Okay, Lord, I'm here just praising you because it's over. Over. <laughs> to realize, oh, no, that was just step one. <laughs> that was day one. Some of us, we are, we're on day one going, celebration. Don't assume the process I am in has ended because assumption leads to disappointment. Your disappointment is the fruit of your assumption and how dare you make an assumption on the way God moves. You know, we, Heather and I over the years of ministry and I know I'm speaking to a lot of people here who there were tests and there were, for us, I remember in the early years, it was around people that we counted as friends. People that we saw, they got our back. And they left. And I remember, like, really struggling with this because I thought, wow, everyone just seems to leave. And you get in this mindset. And God said, are you going to keep going? Or are you going to let this be the thing that stops you on day six? You want to stop on day six? Oh, but you got to see what's coming on day seven. You got to see, because everything I saw, everything that we were involved with in those early days, it looked like everything opposite to the promise of God. And as we journeyed through some of the hardships and the difficulties, gosh, some of you have been there. You've even been maybe involved in areas of ministry and God moved and used you. And maybe you're on day six right now thinking, what's this about? <laughs> but I want to say to you that day seven is coming, but you've got to walk into it. You can't stay where you are. You can't, you've got to refuse that you're not going to be put off by this. So I ask you, what is your Jericho? What, what have you been called to march around right now? What are you marching around? It might be something personal, corporate. What are you marching around? And God is here today saying, come on. Don't presume your progress. You're doing amazing. I do. I believe God's called me to say, you're on day six. Keep going. Oh, but I haven't seen anything. I feel like things have we really made pro You are. Trust me, you are moved as every day you follow me. There is progress that is made, and here it is, moving forward. But don't assume. Whew. Do you know what? I was thought back that if God brought the walls down on my day two, I probably would have thought it was something to do with me. when we got to day seven I knew it was nothing but God because we had nothing left <laughs> and then he steps in 
He steps in. He steps in. Do you know they never lifted a weapon? They lifted trumpets. An army trained for battle. They don't use anything of man. They come under the Spirit of God. God wants you to live your days knowing that it's not with the weapons of this world, oh, but what you've been given. Faith, audacious faith. Whew. Divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. Beautiful, beautiful. So the foundation of an audacious lifestyle. This is how I want to finish. Foundation of an audacious lifestyle. Because it's what we need to live by. It's not just a moment. It's a lifestyle. You see it in the text here. Is number one, you need to be in his presence. Keep walking daily in his presence. Be in his presence. It says the ark, the ark represented the presence of God. They put it at the front of the army. You need it at the front of your day. You need it at the front of your life. Here's the presence. If he's with me, who can be against me? You've got to get him at the front. When you feel alone, it's normally because you left it behind. You've got to put him at the front. Here is the presence. Secondly, the trumpets, the praise. You're the praise every day, no matter what it looks like. Come on, I'm going to pray. I'm going to blow my trumpet. You got to blow your trumpet third perseverance seven days seven days here it is the perseverance that's how we started perseverance you got to see it through how many people were there at the end when the Holy Spirit was promised only a third of who were told to wait for 40 days because they didn't persevere they stopped on six and they missed the promise. I don't want any of you to miss the promise. Don't want you to miss the promise. This is audacious faith. And this last verse to finish, 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20. I want to speak this over the church right now, over every one of your lives. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And as through Him, The amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. So I want to say the promises over your lives are yes. Whatever walls you're facing, they're yes. I want to say if there's barrenness in wombs, it's a yes. I want to say if you're looking for that partner God has called you, I want to say yes. I want to say yes over sickness. I want to say yes because of Jesus, because of the victory, because he was three days in a tomb. And on day one and two, people left. But on the third day, there were some people that turned up in the morning. Are you going to turn up in the morning for what God has? He's here for you. He's here for you. His presence is here. But you've got to keep going. Oh, Lord, you're here. You're here in this place. I pray now in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, you're the one who comes and says, be of courage. Do not fear. Keep going forward. Pick it up. Keep marching forward. Keep coming. Your promise, your promise is on the other side of the wall. Come on, in Jesus' name. I come and I command discouragement to bow down. You are not stuck on this day. You have made progress. You're here even right now, hearing the word of the Lord. And as the word of the Lord comes, it brings life, hope, boldness in Jesus' name. So I'm praying for breakthrough right now. Breakthrough. I'm praying for audacious faith and that foundation to come alive in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. And I want to ask you to close your eyes and just... Very quickly, I want to ask if you have never put your faith in this Jesus. That's why we can talk this way is because Jesus, he is the only source. He is our savior. And he wants a personal relationship with you. That means you've got to ask him in. You've got to accept him as your savior. You've got to come and say, I've got nothing left. (laughs) I, I need a savior. I need forgiveness. Do you know what? He says, come on, through grace Oh, the gift of God. You can step into a relationship with him today. 
but you need to choose it. He won't force it. And I want to say, if you want to put your faith in Jesus for the first time, or you walked away from him and you're hearing this and you stopped on six, do you know what? Today can be day seven. You can step into it. And I want to say, if that's for you, I'd love to pray for you. So while eyes are closed, just quickly, could you just raise your hand and say, I, I, I want to put my faith in Jesus today. I want to recommit my life and make him my Lord today. Would you raise your hand just quickly? God bless you. Just so I can see, just so I can see, would you raise your hand and say, yeah, would you pray for me? I'm going to pray. Any, anyone else, would you just raise your hand and say, yes, please pray for me, please. Oh, salvation is here. God wants to move. Would you raise your hand? Say, I'm coming home. Lord, I'm not stopping on six. Then raise your hand in Jesus' name. Father, I want to thank you that you're moving here. Father, you're here in power. I pray <laughs> oh, for that blood of Jesus. Comes, washes away condemnation. Whew, washes away shame. And I pray for the love of God to pour over your life right now, that you will know him, that you will come home to him, that you will know this is a new day of hope. So in Jesus' name, will you move right now? Amen. Amen. Bless you, church. Come on. Thank you so much, Pastor G, for that incredible message. Guys, it's been such an incredible series looking at the foundations of a audacious life it's so so powerful so applicable to all of us so guys i want to just encourage you if you responded to today's message reach out to your fire starter leader or send us an email at hello at freedomchurch.cc we would love to pray with you um, and your fire starter leaders can lead you in some next steps as well come on so that is it for today's event and next week we are starting a new series and this is an amazing time because you get to invite your friend Come on. when we're starting this new series now at freedom church we teach in series and what this basically means is that over the next um four to five weeks we will be covering the specific topic in the bible and unpacking it as well and so this is an amazing time to invite your friends because we're still fresh and new in the series and so i'd like to encourage you next week invite your friends and we hope to see you there take care come on see you